Hello and a very good day. Today, me and my group members will be presenting on the conservation study at the Biomedical Museum Building Kuala Lumpur. Firstly, I would like to introduce you to the members of the group, including myself, Denis Iskandar Hakimi bin Muhammad Roshidi, Anis Sahira binti Baharudin, and Farah Nadirah binti Muhammad Azlan. We hope you enjoy our video. Are required to do a study at the Biomedical Museum building, including the background, location, sun orientation, and adjacent building. Other details such as traffic flows and site facilities should be also able to be obtained through this study. Not only that, the architectural aspects of the building should also be able to be identified. In addition, we are required to do building condition assessments towards this building in order to identify the major and minor defects in the building. The building defect analysis can be obtained through this study. We are also required to do a proposal for adaptive reuse of the building. The SWOT analysis in order to propose the suitable adaptive reuse should be analysed. The proposed concept of the adaptive reuse should be able to be explained including the 2D plans, 3D plans, proposed layout and the exterior including the interior view. Firstly is the background and history of the Biomedical Museum building. It was built in 1900 and is officially opened for operation in February 1901. The architect for this building is Sir Frank Athelstan Swettenham. In 1928, the building had modification where a block in the south side of the building were added. The building is located surrounding Chow Kit and Titiwangsa and the full address of the building is Jalan Pahang 50588 Kuala Lumpur. The building is located where the sunrise are present at the back of the building while the sunset are present at the front of the building. The building is located facing the west, where during the day, the building does not receive excessive sunlight. There are two ways to access the building. First is through the building's main gate, directly from Jalan Pahang, where a left turn is then made. Next access is through the Institute of Medical Research's main gate, accessible where a left turn at Jalan Pahang are made before turning right straight towards the building. Traffic flow at the main road Jalan Pahang are quite heavy due to it being the main road. This road has less traffic since it is an inside road and not the main road. This road are usually packed during 8am and 5pm, where workers get to and off work. Several adjacent buildings surrounding the Biomedical Museum includes the Grand Season Hotel, UKM's Faculty of Health Science, Institute of Medical Research, University Utara Malaysia Campus and also HKL's Pediatric Institute. Several vegetation that are present surrounding the building are including royal palm tree, yellow butterfly palm tree, nara tree, fern pine and also parrot's beak. There are several site facilities provided at the building including pickup point, signboard, lamp post and also parking. Moving on to the architectural style, this building's design is a collaboration of neoclassical and art deco type design and is closely resembles the classic block type of the neoclassical design. Some examples of the building that has similar design are the Ipoh Railway Station and also Suffolk House, Penang. Some architectural overviews of the building includes flat roof and spacious square plan which showcases art deco design and also classic detail elements and repeated classical patterns and detailings commonly curves or arches that showcases neoclassical design. Some of the significance of the building includes the development of globin mat, acknowledgement of service of pathology, National Resource Reference Centre and also the establishment of registration of bone marrow donor Malaysia. For building condition assessment, there are 72 defects that have been found in this building. However, in this video, we will show you the major defects in every floor in this building. We use a symbol to define the type of defect occur and you can refer to the legend next to the plan. And the color of line is dedicated to the condition of defect which is red, 
yellow or green. In mezzanine floor, there are a major defect which is stemma and field of paint at the wall. The possible causes of this defect is due to the dampness and leaking at the roof space. Next, at the first floor, there are two types of major defect occur which is firstly is stemma and peel of paint at the wall due to dampness and leaking from shilling. And the another one is deterioration at window frame due to exposed to the weather. Last but not least, at the ground floor, there are four types of major defect occur in this building. First is a gap at the ceiling due to old age of material. Next is a peeling of paint at the wall under the sink due to exposed to the dampness and also leaking of pipe. Then deterioration at a wooden staircase due to insect attack and lastly the, the, the deterioration at a window due to the exposed to the weather. For analysis of defect in this building, the total defect is 72 defect and overall rating of the building is fair. This building, which is Bio Medical Museum, the most defect that can be found in this building is peeling of pain and stemma. It is due to exposed to the weather, leaking and old age of material. The second most defect that can be found is deterioration due to exposed to the weather and insect attack. This defect can be found at wooden staircase and window frame. This building just have a serious intention defect at the mezzanine floor due to dampness and leaking at ceiling. The conclusion that can be made is the maintaining in charge of this building should improve the maintenance work. It is to ensure the building can perform well which fix their purpose of the building as a biomedical museum. Now, moving on to the measured drawing existing building plan. At the roof plan, we can see the type of roof that used for this building is a flat roof. And that I also have a small space which is mezzanine floor which is same level as a roof level. For the first floor, mostly space at the first floor used as a lab, which is taxology lab, microbiology and also biotechnology lab. And they have also a gallery of historical gallery and snack gallery. And also have a small office and a toilet for the worker. While at the ground floor, the most of the space used as a gallery space to show the visitor about the medical tools and equipment as fit as its function as a museum. Next, there are four elevation plans for this building which is front elevation, right elevation, left elevation and right elevation. In this building, there are 14 types of window which every type have different design and size. Next, the design concept of the building. While we preserve the building's exterior, including its color, due to its heritage title, the interior is modified and improved from its design. For the interior, the concept of Capsule Hotel integrates a modern design with a simple color palette of black and white, while maintaining the building's existing asymmetrical compositions. It employs a sleek and simple aspect in the building design, detailings, and elements. Next, the SWOT analysis. The SWOT analysis of the existing building that requires us to do a proposal for adaptive reuse of the building. Firstly, the strength. It has a good location of the building, which located at the center of the city. It has a modern building design and detailings despite the old age. The building design and detailings inspired by the neoclassical and art deco design, which is high in aesthetic value. Secondly, the weakness, it prone to the heavy traffic during the rush hour. It has a limited attractive scenery surrounding the building which can wash out the appearance of the building. Thirdly, opportunity. The building visual can be improved by using the more attractive colors. The buildings can be reused as an attraction to the visitors as the building is located strategically at the city. And the last one, is the threat. The act of nature such as heavy rain and extreme heat may affect the quality and integrity of the building materials and appearance of the building. This is the bubble diagram for our building proposal. The first one is the bubble diagram for the ground floor from the entrance to the receptions 
from the receptions to the lobby and the office and then to the other space such as the mini garden, mini mart, cafe and gallery. For the second bubble diagram at the first floor, the first floor can be accessed through the stairs that connected between the ground floor and the first floor. The first space for the first floor is the entertainment area. From the entertainment area, it can be accessed, go to the capsule rooms or to the office or to the reading rooms. This is the floor plan proposal for the cozy capsule. For the ground floor, it consists of the porch, lobby, reception, gallery 1, mini office, gallery 2, storage, rest area, pantry, toilet for the male and the female, mini mart, cafe, office, and mini garden. For the first floor, it consists of the entertainment area, head office, office, meeting room, reading room, toilet, laundry room. Musola for the male and females, including the capsule room for the female and male. This is a layout with furniture for each space in the cozy capsule. The first picture shows the layout for the ground floor, while the second picture shows the layout for the first floor. This is the building plan for the cozy capsule proposal. It consists of the front elevations, rear elevations, left elevations, and the right elevations. Next, this is the interior design proposal for each space in the cozy capsule building. For the ground floor, it consists of the office, lobby and receptions, mini office, gallery, storage, rest area, pantry, mini mart, cafe, and toilet. For the first floor, it consists of the meeting room, office, entertainment area, toilets, capsule room for the female, and capsule room for the male, musola, laundry, and reading room. This picture shows the bird eye view for the exterior of the building. There are some interior view for the before and after of the sum space. Firstly, the existing library will be changed into the cafe. Secondly, the existing open space will be changed into the gallery. And the thirdly, the existing office will be changed into the reading room. Next, I would like to present the interior view for our main space which is capsule room. The first one is the capsule room for the male. The existing biology lab had been changed into the capsule room for the male. Each capsule box for the male can be occupied by one person only. While the second one, the existing toxicology lab had been changed into the capsule room for the female. There are two types of the capsule box for the male. The first type of the capsule box is it can be occupied by one person only. And another type of the capsule box for the female is it can be occupied by two person at one time. There are several conclusions that can be made through this study. First, the detail of the building like background, location, vegetation, sound orientation and such be able to obtain through the study. The architecture aspect including style and overview of the building also can be identified. Not only that, the building condition assessments towards the building to identify the defects in the buildings are able to be obtained. The building's defect analysis are also able to be identified and distinguished from this study. Lastly, the proposal for adaptive reuse of the building, which is to transform it into a capsule hotel, are able to be carried out. The SWOT analysis and proposed concept are able to be analyzed and identified, including the building plans and proposed exterior and interior design layouts and views, 
and that is all from our group thank you for listening